McKelty and Tony continue to deliver content via their Patreon platform. They recently sat down with McKelty's sister, Isabel, for an in-depth conversation. Let's jump into the synopsis. everyone, what's up? It's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be recapping the in-depth conversation that McKelty and Tony had with McKelty's sister Isabel on their Patreon platform. I will link that conversation down in the description of this video so you can check it out if you want to watch it in its entirety. McKelty and Tony asked Isabel about a range of topics during this one hour, I think it was about a one hour long conversation. And the first topic that is brought up is Isabel's scoliosis. And I thought this was a particularly interesting topic since we only hear like the high level agony that really Isabel experienced during her teen years, and they got into a lot more detail. So Isabel discloses that she was actually diagnosed with scoliosis at 13 after a school examination, and Tony looked really surprised that she that they checked for scoliosis at school, and I definitely remember getting checked for scoliosis and like head lice and like vision checks when I was in elementary and middle school. So that's definitely not uncommon. What actually really surprised me was apparently Isabel came home and told her mother that they thought that she had scoliosis and Christine's reaction was, that's not true. They lied to you. And not only was that surprising for me to hear, but McKelty seemed pretty surprised hearing that as well. Apparently, Christine took Isabel to the same doctor that treated Truly's kidney failure. And from there, they referred her to what I'm assuming would be like an orthopedic surgeon, but they say a surgeon. McKelty then tells Isabel that scoliosis always sounded like the name of an STD to her. In in fact, McKelty said that when she first heard that Isabel had scoliosis, that her immediate reaction was, oh my God, my sister has an STD when Isabel was 13. So the game plan for Isabel was, let's start out with braces. She actually had two braces. She had a day brace and a night brace. And she goes into a lot of detail about how uncomfortable they were, how much she hated them, how she had to buy clothes two sizes bigger just to fit them, how the kids she went to school with were not particularly nice about her wearing the brace. And she actually said that she had to buy maternity jeans so that it could accommodate the bulk of the brace. And my heart just at, like middle school is tough on its best day. My heart absolutely breaks for thinking about what Isabel had to go through. Apparently the treatment plan was really under a time crunch because they wanted to try to fix the curve or correct it as best as possible before Isabel was done growing, before she completed puberty. This is incredibly off topic, but Tony uses the word bro a lot throughout this conversation. And it just reminded me, if you guys watch 90 Day Fiance, Libby's brother Charlie also uses the word bro a lot. And it just kind of reminded me of that completely off topic, but he does call Isabel bro here. And I was like, okay. So they go over the topic of Isabel's surgery. What was the surgery like? What was recovery like? And Isabel said that the surgery itself was about four hours long. It did take longer than they were anticipating and that her recovery took about six months to a year. She participated in not only physical therapy, but mental health therapy as well, because 
having a back surgery to that degree completely alters your life. She had to relearn how to walk. She had to relearn how to do a lot of things, she says, because the spine is connected to so many things. She also grew a half inch taller. One thing Isabel did tell McKelty and Tony during this conversation is that apparently while she was under heavy medication and sedation, she was quite flirty with the male medical staff. And during that time, Tony, McKelty, and Isabel took a moment to really appreciate nurses and the medical staff. They said that everyone surrounding Isabel during that time was incredible. So it's really nice to hear that she had good care. She tells the viewers and McKelty and Tony that she is in a lot less pain now, but she does still have times that she has to take a heating pad and kind of nurse her back because her back does still hurt from time to time. If you subscribe to McKelty and Tony's Patreon and you watch the conversation, she does show off her scar and it is badass. I am not going to lie. It is a badass scar. McKelty talks about how her C-section scar is not nearly as cool. I have a C-section scar myself and I can definitely co-sign. In my opinion, Isabel's scar is way more badass. And Tony asks Isabel if she had any advice for people that are suffering with scoliosis now. And her big advice was do research, research, research. And she tells people, do what's best for your body. I think that that is really good advice. The second topic that came up was North Carolina. When asked about what, why North Carolina, why did she choose to move across the country, Isabel disclosed that she said that she didn't want to be on her deathbed regretting anything. Isabel goes on to say how close she is to Axel and Evie and how much she loves Maddie, Caleb, and their whole family. Isabel said another big reason for her going to North Carolina was that she wanted to get closer to Janelle's kids. She especially references that any time Janelle would come into town, a lot of times Hunter would come down as well, and she just grew a lot closer to Savannah, Hunter, Gabriel, Garrison, all of Janelle's kids. She was asked to name the three things she liked most about North Carolina, and she said that the scenery is stunning, the people are really nice, and it made her want to be more spiritual. She did end up going to church a couple times. She does not consider herself to be religious, but she attended church along with Maddie and Caleb, and it made her want to explore spirituality more. She was asked what were a couple of the worst things about her experience in North Carolina, and she said she was lonely. She didn't meet a lot of people while she was there, and she didn't really like community college very much. She did reveal that she worked at Starbucks while she was living in North Carolina, and there she did make a friend. Tony actually chimes in and says that something he's noticed since being around the family, and especially Christine's kids, is there is not a huge emphasis on making friends. And I actually thought that was pretty interesting. And Isabel agreed saying that, you know, the siblings are so interconnected and close to each other that, yeah, they really have not made a lot of outside friends. When asked about her reasoning for moving back home, or I guess I should say moving to Utah, because now she is living in Utah, she says that it was because she didn't like school and she was lonely and miss missed the rest of her family. She was sad to leave Maddie, Caleb, and their kids, but she's still really close with them. She is now studying history at the University of Utah, and she is contemplating law schools. Then McKelty had to go take a break and feed one of the twins, and this is where Tony kind of segues into a conspiracy theory tangent. They're talking about their mutual love of history, and Tony tells Isabel about this conspiracy theory that he heard about how Hitler actually didn't die, that he escaped to Argentina um, 
lived out his life and died an old man. He says that he believes that the remains that were found that were supposed to be Hitler's were actually identified to be a woman. And previously, before we get into this tangent, Tony says that the next topic was going to be polygamy, which I was super excited about. And then he goes onto this tangent and I was like, wow, this really took a left turn. So eventually they do get to topic number three, which is polygamy. Isabel, like the rest of her siblings, seems to be a hard no on polygamy. She actually refers to polygamy as a cult. She says that polygamy is extremely unfair to women, and she references how hard her mom had to work to make sure that she would be financially okay after divorcing her dad. The three of them talk about how the fact that because polygamy is not legal, these marriages are not legal marriages the spiritual wives do not have protection under the law. She says that she would not recommend polygamy to her kids, and she is glad that her mom left polygamy. Then McKelty and Tony ask her how she views all of the moms, and she says that she views Christine and Janelle as her mom's 100%. She says that with Robin, it's a hard situation. She is really close to Robin's older daughters, but that it's been harder to claim her as a mom since the divorce, which I found really interesting because Gwen talks about how close she and Isabel are and we know that Gwen is not a fan of Robin at all. She also goes on to say that she has not talked to Mary in a long time, but that she was close to Mary when she was younger. Another interesting point that I thought was brought up because we know that some of the older kids like the older girls, especially seem to have been targets of Mary's wrath and People have speculated online that maybe the younger kids just don't have the same experience with Mary and Isabel seems to kind of echo that sentiment. Then Tony gathered some questions from Patreon to ask Isabel. Of course, the first question asked was, how did Isabel feel about Cody not attending her surgery? She says, dad not coming to her surgery was really sucky. It made her sad, but she tries not to dwell on the past. A very diplomatic answer that really was reminiscent of Gwen's commentary to me. She was then asked what her favorite and least favorite parts were about being part of a polygamous family. She says her favorite part was that she has so many people to rely on. And Isabel thinks that it was really the best situation when it came to raising kids. But table that for just one second. Because when she, when she reveals her least favorite part is there was just less time and individual attention paid to each kid. So I think in terms of having siblings, like having a lot of siblings and having that support system, it was a really good thing. But when you needed individualized attention from a parent, you kind of didn't have that, especially if, you know, because Cody, we know, is like the most absentee father. And then Christine, who's their biological mom, was raising literally all of the kids at the same time. So for Christine's kids especially, it had to have been extremely difficult to get individualized attention. Isabel was then asked whether she thought Cody was a better grandfather or father. Isabel says that she doesn't really know Cody as a grandpa, so so I was like, so like that's the same? McKelty is pretty emphatic when she says that she thinks Cody is a better grandfather than a father. And Tony says that he thinks Cody is doing a great job at being a grandpa. One Patreon question simply was just, how are you doing to Isabel? To which she answered that she was doing good. She likes living in Utah and she feels like North Carolina is prettier than Utah, which actually surprised McKelty. And then they kind of get into a whole beaches versus mountains discussion. Then a viewer asked a question that really shocked McKelty. 
They asked about the time that Isabel and Brianna actually moved in with Mary. McKelty looks absolutely appalled by this question. McKelty cannot hide what she is thinking. Her facial expressions really give it away. Apparently, they didn't really move in with Mary. Apparently, it was supposed to be for a weekend or maybe a little bit longer, but Isabel ended up only staying a night because she missed her mom so much. Isabel says that her bucket list includes traveling. She wants to go skiing and snowboarding, which I mean, she lives in Utah, so there's really no place better to do that. Ever the diplomat, Isabel says that she does not have a favorite sibling, but I know, I think we've heard from a lot of siblings, they consider Isabel her, their favorite sibling. So I think that just speaks to how lovable Isabel is and how well she meshes with all of her siblings. And Isabel is going to school, she's studying, and she's working. She's being a young adult. For me, this conversation was really eye-opening just how much Isabel truly, truly suffered with scoliosis and how much better her life is now since she has had the surgery, which really makes you look at Cody just completely abandoning her during her time of need. It really kind of puts that into a, it really shines a light on him not being there for her. Let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments. I will be putting a link in the description of this video that will take you to McKelty and Tony's Patreon so you can watch the full conversation if you wish. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Reality Squad, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a good one. Much love.